Hello and welcome to my Explosive Trap of Shrapnel Trickster Leak Start Guide. In this video I'll be showing you how to leak start both Explosive Trap and the Transfigured Gem in Softcore Trade. I'll give you a detailed leveling POB with some landmarks you can check yourself against, some tips, uh, crafting guides, a simple recipe for managing your mana, and how to eventually gear up to instantly delete bosses. Explosive Trap is one of the best bossing skills in Path of Exile, and this guide builds off of strong defensive and offensive synergies in Trickster. Changes to this build guide since the last one include more detailed guidance around progression after campaign, improvements in recovery which I used to play deep into Gauntlet as a first time hardcore player, how to take advantage of the new supports, and a quick primer on how the Transfigured Shrapnel Gem works so that you can maximize your damage. The first and most important thing about any build guide is how does a build feel to play? Traps if you've never played them before are a different playstyle than something like a bow build. You move adjacent to a pack of mobs, chuck some traps into the center, and move on to the next pack. Or, in boss encounters, you lay huge piles of traps at their feet, waiting for them to phase in and trigger them all. Typically, most traps are bossing focused, but lastly, the shrapnel gem was added, which took the normal gem and spread it out to make a comfy mapper out of what was normally a bossing skill. Not only that, because of the way the AoE works for the gem, it's possible to squeeze out more damage than you would otherwise expect when eyeballing POB. Uh, a little bit more on that later. Crucially, for build feel, this is a trap build, and if you don't like trap builds, you're not going to like this build. The damage begins after a slight arming delay after you cast it, and it's not for everyone. I personally love it, I've been playing it a long time, and 324 looks like a perfect league for a single target. Let's start at the beginning and cover the changes in patch 324. First up, this is actually huge, is the addition of the call to arms support. If you played my build before, you recall I've always been looking for this. In Sanctum, I ran call to arms relic and crucible, I ran it on my weapon tree and so on. Now we get call to arms for free and automated, which means we get up to 2k life recovery at no cost and easy access to endurance charges, which synergizes exceptionally well with Immortal Call. I know the melee builds got kind of scuffed with this change, but it's a big win for right side builds. Next, there was the removal of the 3-5% mana cost reduction on jewels. It seemed like mostly a nerf for Adorned. This isn't really a big deal. I have one of my League Start POV from last league, but it's super easy to remove. A lot of the mana stuff has been a little overblown. Nothing about the build changes from 323 in this regard, up until you get a Mageblood. Mageblood, in general, got a pretty significant nerf for most builds, but the reason this build guide is a couple days late is I spent the weekend cooking up a Sabo self-chill prototype, which should be an AoE monster. That's outside the scope of this league start video, I just know a bunch of people followed me into self chill last league, and it's something I'm tentatively planning on respecting into after I get a mage blood this league. Otherwise, Explosive Trap was untouched. Shrapnel re received a nerf of about 25% of its AoE, which brings it down to still 50% more than the normal gem, and it should still be fine. On the whole, it lost damage in the teens percent depending on your AoE breakpoints, which means it will still be an excellent bossing gem. I'll still be doing the same side-by-side -side comparison test in Standard as soon as the League launches, so I'll have some concrete evidence and a showcase I can share sometime opening weekend with you. On paper, it looks like there will now be some scenarios where Explosive Trap will outperform Shrapnel, but only by a small amount, so I plan on running Shrapnel full-time. Before we get into how to level this, I want to talk a bit about Ascendancy. There are several viable ways to play this skill, and a lot of it comes down to personal preference. You can go Poison Pathfinder, Raider, Inquisitor, you can go Saboteur. Those are kind of the most viable Ascendancies. Why do I play the Trickster version? And it's pretty simple. There's just no other combination of raw power and defense in any other ascendancy. Shadow is best located on the tree for access to traps, crit, suppression. The Acrobatics Lethal Pride slot is amazing. Charges and charge duration from Swift Killer are incredible. And for charge sustain, and they're basically up for the entire map. Suppression is the best line of defense in an uber fight, and Tricksters both get it for free, and they get the best version of it with Spellbreaker. And once you have budget for spending a few divines, you unlock access to things like assassin nodes and harness the void for substantial damage. As a class, Trickster is probably also the most versatile. You can roll it into nearly immortal Valdo farmer, or you can go super juice uber speed farmer and sort of anything in between. I played both of those builds with explosive trap on the same character in Affliction. The primary downside, however, is that in order to take advantage of your energy shield and ghost stance, you need to manage your mana cost. It's not hard to do, it's sort of like shuffling your gear to try and make your stat requirements work on Leadership's Price or Rational Doctrine. Once you do it, you don't have to really think about it anymore. However, if you're a new player, or maybe this is your first league, the danger is that you don't get it figured out and you end up just not having a good time. 
Pathfinder I think is interesting. The case for Poison Pathfinder is you can get it off the ground for very little. Your best in slot weapons are consuming darks, which are dirt cheap on day one, and Poison is very strong on a skill that hits hard and is often as explosive trap. The case for Raider is pretty similar. You get to level as a ranger, which is absurdly fast on League Start. You get access to free suppression and Avatar of the Chase and Rapid Assault for doing things like invitation farming very quickly. It's quite a bit squishier than all of the other options, but it works really well for opening weekend. The case for Inquisitor is Eldritch Battery Mind Over Matter, or EB Mom, and earlier access to crit capping. If you are closer to crit capped at, say, level 75, your progression through white maps is going to be smoother. Getting that from your Ascendancy is very nice early because you don't have to spend gear affixes or passive points on it. Pious Path is very cushy leveling because you get a lot of free recovery and it basically solves mana for you. You could even take it a step further and look for flat regen on your gear and work through an RF setup for more damage. The downside is that Inquisitor is a left side of the tree build that needs to be on the right side to scale damage. And once you solve crit when you're level 85 or 90 and some of the other Ascendancies, the utility of Righteous Providence more or less goes away. There's some other higher budget things too. The damage ceiling is a fair bit lower, but if you're looking for a really comfortable league start, Inquisitor is probably your best choice. I thought Palstron had a really even take on this. You can go check it out on his channel. I think he might be making a build get for it. I'm not sure. And if he does, I'll definitely link it in the description below. The case for Saboteur is free AoE scaling and huge quality of life in the form of Ignite Shock Immunity, flat 10% life regen, good generic defensive nodes like Blind, which is criminally underrated as a defense, and it's positioned in the right spot on the tree for traps and has access to all the Trickster and Assassin nodes if you want to spend a few more Divines on Forbidden Flame and Flesh Jewels. It doesn't scale defensively as well as Trickster, and the damage potential is a bit lower, but with the new Shrapnel Gem, it's definitely an interesting option. In fact, there's a pretty good chance that I'll respec into Sabo for high budget self jill after I acquire Mageblood. Some changes to the League Star POB. This time I've added gear sets for different leveling benchmarks. I've also added trees between A10 and late maps so you have a better idea of what I typically prioritize and you'll find new matching skill sets for these. I find the way that sets are managed a bit frustrating in POB so if something looks weird or damage seems off, check that all three of the sets between skills, tree, and gear are lining up. I've spent a lot of time adding context to the notes section. If you have a question, start there first. There's almost surely something there that can help you with whatever your question is. I'm still recommending rolling magma into armor brand and fire trap for campaign. It's a really smooth, comfortable leveling setup. If you're a one skill per build player, that's also fine. I've leveled many times with explosive trap right off the beach. It will just take you a bit longer than if you went with meta leveling. Rolling magma, if you've never used it before, is pretty simple. You throw your balls through flame wall to get some added flat damage. And if you throw the ball at an enemy or boss's feet, you can hit them twice with it. It's sort of clunky, but it's a ton of early power for easing through the first three acts. I've left notes about how to source some additional extra added flat. Be sure to check those if you're having struggles with Brutus. In act two, I'm making a change from last league. You should help Alira. This will provide three things that are incredibly helpful during campaign and basically all the way up until you start min-maxing in the early 90s. Flat five mana regen per second will make your trap spend way more comfortable 50% all res and 20 crit multi, which is a crit build late in maps, is a good chunk of free damage. It's definitely worth the two passive points. You should definitely take this. After campaign and the last build, I talk about prioritizing getting flasks and some other things. All of that still applies and that information is still there and is good. But I want to add some ways that I would prioritize upgrades. So I play Fire Trap until about level 75. So these upgrades primarily apply to Fire Trap for white maps, though there is a lot of overlap with Explosive Trap. The first and probably most important thing for smooth progression are better weapons. You can vendor recipe scepters and rune daggers to get plus one fire gems, then orb of augmentation and regal orb and bench a fourth mod. There are a decent number of good affixes, so you might get one, but I'll start looking for something better right away. Any caster weapon, so a scepter, wand, rune dagger, on trade, that is reasonably cheap and has some combination of plus one to fire gems, spell damage, added flat fire to spells, increased burning damage, increased fire damage, all will be helpful to boost your single target with fire trap. Next, getting some amount of trap throwing speed on a belt is a big improvement in white maps damage. I'd start looking for an essence of zeal any tier and hit a crystal belt or maybe a stygian if you come across one of those. Next in the priority list is looking for oils for dreamer. You need a sepia, teal, and azure. These are super cheap or can be self-farmed. And once you have the materials for dreamer, you can start looking around for a five link. A couple unique item options that are fairly common drops are a Nycta's Lantern, which is a good damage boost, particularly to Explosive Trap, but also to Fire Trap. 
or if you find a praxis that will help solve your mana problems and you won't have to think about it until you get to a six link. When switching to Explosive Trap around level 75 or 80, you can start adding plus one to physical spell gems to the list of things you're looking for, and you can remove increased burning damage and greatly deprioritize added flat damage to spells as the added effectiveness is much lower for it. Once I have Explosive Trap, I'll start looking for a five link and I'll start looking for Brittle. They changed the way Heist worked in 323 to make targeting experimented bases much harder, so I wouldn't expect to see an alternating scepter on trade if you're out of campaign and working toward maps until many hours after league start. I didn't end up getting an alternating scepter until day two or three, I think, and I paid a divine for it. In lieu of that, here are some alternatives. Leadership's price is an option, and it's self-farmable for our SSF friends, though it involves heisting. The interrogation jewel is also very good, and it drops from delirium, though it's a bit harder to self-farm. Gale Sight's another option. It's a T2 unique helmet that works fine, given how often explosive trap hits. Or you can go heisting for an alternating scepter, though I can't say I'd recommend that, as several people have said it's difficult to farm. Now for what everyone's been waiting for, mana costs. Mana costs on traps are expensive, and this is one of the places that people get hung up. So to make that easier, I've put together a quick recipe for easy mana management for a four link, a five link, and a six link. For all of these, you're gonna want to first have helped Alira as she provides a nice base five flat mana per second. You can respec out of this easily in late game, but for early game, it's so much comfier to have. Second, you're gonna wanna take the skills cost life instead of 30% of mana life mastery, and get some amount of flat life recovery. It doesn't need to be a lot, like 40 life is enough. Ways to get it are a single roll of flat life regen on equipment. You could take the recovery mastery and the recoup, recoup wheel, or you could run a low level vitality with arrogance as another good option with very little downside. You can also run a stone golem and I will in campaign, but in higher tier maps, they become squishy and I wouldn't rely on only that. You can optionally also have a low level clarity for additional regen. It's mandatory for a four link, but it becomes less required for a five and six link if you want to repurpose the socket. For a four link, that's it. You should expect to have a mana flask all the way through campaign. It's pretty unavoidable for many skills and you'll need that mana flask until you collect a couple chaos to allocate dreamer. This is what the mana spend looks like in that exact scenario. For a five link explosive trap, I've made two changes. The most important is I've anointed dreamer on my amulet. I still have no reduced mana cost crafts. The second is I've run the lowest level lab a few times to quality my inspiration. You don't have to do this as optional, but if you do, you can drop the mana flask. And this is what that spend looks like if you switch over to hatred. For a six link explosive trap, I've only added the Elrion crafts to two pieces of jewelry. Because you only need it twice, you can still use things like a replica Dragon's Fane or Ashes of the Stars. And that's it. For higher budgets, there are lots of other options. You can hunt for reduced mana cost on Veils on Rings or maybe grab an Impossible Escape, but you don't need any of those things for mana to be perfectly manageable. One last thing about the POB that I did not specifically mention last time, is that when you get to late maps, you should switch to Swift Killer and get freeze immunity from Brian King. Swift Killer is extremely strong and will be important if you elect to use a Sunblast, which is my next topic. Sunblast is inarguably the strongest trap unique in the game. It instantly triples your damage and allows you to focus on something other than acquiring trap throwing speed. I've league started Sunblast every league since they reworked it in 319, and I intend to do the same for 324. You do not have to use this, but it is an absurd amount of power to not take there are a few important points to consider. The first is, if you've never played with one, you should try it before committing. Go find one in standard, give it a try. You have to start playing traps in a different way. You can't lay them at the enemy's feet. You instead need to think of it like painting the ground with a one second delayed AOE. Some people love it and some people hate it. It makes mapping easier in a lot of ways because you get guaranteed spread and high density, but some people strongly dislike the additional delay or just can't adjust to it and won't touch it. Crucially, a bad roll of Sunblast I would not play with because it takes too long for traps to expire. On opening weekend, I'd take any roll probably 60% or higher just for access to the damage. And if we're several days in, I'd probably start looking for something 67% or better. One word of caution too, is that several build creators are considering trap builds, Arrow, Captain Lance, Palsteron, and some others that will push the market price of this unique up. It's a T2 unique, which means you might pay a price for a good roll. In Affliction, I bought a 67% opening day for about 40 chaos for context. If you do decide to play with a Sunblast, there are a couple key things to know. The first is you cannot play with Swift Assembly in your links or any other source of additional traps. 
Doing so will make you overthrow so bad that your DPS will fall to exactly zero as none of your traps will go off. With charge traps and all your frenzy charges up, you can also overthrow traps. See what I'm doing here with Rallycash's as an example. Slightly overthrowing is actually a DPS advantage because it means you can easily keep your maximum trap number out while still moving, but it takes a little bit of getting used to. So if you're not comfortable with that and you feel like you're overthrowing, what I would do is remove charge traps and replace it with hypothermia. Finally, the roll of your Sunblast will have a huge impact on your ability to overthrow or not overthrow. A low roll will mean you will overthrow more, which will reduce your DPS. One question I was asked for this build guide was to talk about recovery and ailments, so let's start with recovery. I played hardcore for the first time in the 323 Misery Gauntlet, and it was a pretty manageable stroll into late red maps, largely on the back of Recoup, which as a trickster you get pretty easy access to two wheels of. This synergized well with Ghost Dance because I could recover ES at the same time as I would start stacking Recoup, and the Mastery would give me that Recoup over 3 seconds instead of 4. The second thing I did when looking for upgrades when I was looking on the ground was prioritizing flat life regen on my gear over most other things, and I took the flat life recovery from the Mastery. In the end, I had a few hundred life regen per second, paired with 44% recoup over 3 seconds, combined with the ES recovery of Spellbreaker and Ghost Dance, and I felt quite tanky. Recoup doesn't show up in your EHP or other metrics that people often eyeball when comparing builds, but its effect is very noticeable. If you're looking for recovery, flat regen on gear, and one or both of the recoup wheels on the right side of the tree is what I would recommend. Ailments are more annoying on the other hand, and we don't get the shock ignite immunity that Sabo does. So the first thing I'll do when I get to maps is roll an ignite immunity flask and automate it with triggers when ignited. For freeze immunity, I will keep one step ahead until I unlock freeze immunity in the Brian King Pantheon, and then I'll take that. Once I get a bit more budget, I'll roll 100% shock avoidance boots, and I'll use a storm shroud to go completely ailment immune. You can see this setup in both the additional POBs I provide in the description. Since I didn't do it earlier in the video, I want to do a quick introduction to Explosive Trap and Shrapnel and how they differ. The intro 101 level of Explosive Trap is that there is a primary hit of about this size for a level 21 gem. The secondary radius in which all the smaller explosions can spawn is also this size. This is our blue circle, and for a level 21 gem it's 1.9 meters. The smaller explosions can spawn their center point all the way to the edge of the blue circle, so our effective damage is the green circle. As you move from the center point out towards the edge of the green circle, your effective damage drops in a gradient. For a level 21 normal gem, this will happen within a 1 meter circle right at the center, which is not a very large area. Shrapnel functionally works like the normal one, however in 324 the secondary radius was made to be about 50% larger than the normal gem, which broadens the area where smaller explosions can hit. If we do the same math on the normal gem, the maximal overlaps area, or area where we do the most damage, looks like this for the new gem in 324. With a considerably higher base fizz hit of 45% more than the normal gem, it means every hit gets 45% more ailment effect, and shrapnel inflicts its maximum damage over a much larger area, making it a much improved mapper over the normal gem. Now some testing needs to be done to determine exactly what the effect will be on bossing, but the napkin math suggests it will be slightly better than the normal gem in some bossing cases, and slightly worse in others, instead of flatly better in every way like it was in 323. I intend on testing it opening weekend in standard, and I'll let you know how it performs. Before I go, I want to share a couple upgrades to the build you can do as you push further into endgame. I've included two POBs in the description. One takes a tankier route, and the other one's a bit more damage without being completely glass cannon. These aren't using crazy expensive rares or anything like that. It's a simple plus two gem scepter, ailment immunity from a storm shroud, things like a taste of hate. If you want a bit more info on the reasons I made some of those choices, you can find that in the 323 version of the same build guide. Nothing has changed there. Best of luck, everyone. I'll see you on the beach.